The night before we closed, I was in the rain, four o'clock in the morning, I couldn't sleep. And I'm looking at that house saying, what have I done? It was an old, pink, ugly, stucco house. There was no air condition. But it was on the right street, in the right neighborhood, and I had arrived in California. Well, you know, Grant, when, when, when you made your first million. No, well, I'm a, I might make a million right here. <laughs> when you made your first million. Yeah. Can I go? Yeah. Oh, you oh, won that. You won that. You won that. You won that. We're going over here? Yeah. <clears throat> thousand a game. When okay. you, yeah, thousand dollars a game. When, when you made your first million, did you think you arrived? Man, I didn't even make the, like, I didn't make a million dollars. What I did was, um, what happened was I was out grinding, pounding away like a freaking maniac. On the board already, son. Yeah, look at that. And what happened was I, I was in La Jolla, California, and I was at my little desk. I bought this $850,000 house. It was like no air conditioning. I remember closing the house. I'm like, there's no way I put 200 grand down. I was just starting to make some money and my, my deal was starting to work, you know. Found this house, fell in love, said I gotta move there. I moved from Houston all the way to La Jolla. The night before I closed, I, had a, I was dating a girl. We moved over together to, to La Jolla from Houston. Drove a BMW and an old Ford Explorer. Drug a U-Haul across the country. I saved my plants in Houston because I, I didn't have enough money to buy yeah. plants. I'm probably 30, let me see, I'm probably 31 years old. And the night we were staying in a travel lodge for eighty dollars a night. Wow! I mean, dude, I was struggling. Eighty. Like I know a it night. doesn't seem like when you say eight hundred fifty thousand dollars house, I put everything. I put two hundred grand down. I financed six fifty. My my note was, I think my note was four thousand bucks a month. And I was like, there's no, I don't. What am I doing? The night before we closed, I was in the rain. Never rains in La Jolla. In the rain, four o'clock in the morning, I couldn't sleep, and. Uh, I'm across the street from the house. I went for a run that night because I couldn't sleep. And I'm looking at the house saying, what have I done? It was an old, pink, ugly, stucco house. There was no air condition. But it was on the right street in the right neighborhood. And I had arrived in California. We, got, we moved into the house and, and I'm starting to like make a little money. I'm, I was making enough to buy the house to get approved for the house. Yeah. But what happened was I didn't know how much money I was making. And I never thought about being a millionaire. Like I never thought about, I'm gonna be a millionaire one day. That, that wasn't the deal. I just wanted, man, these are terrible roles. I just wanted, I was just working hard, opened up my checkbooks, I'm going through my accounts, and I'm like, man, I have a million dollars. Cash. I had a million dollars in accounts. And, and plus I had the, the house with the debt on the house, but I was terrified. The million dollars didn't make me feel good. When I saw that, the fear that went through my body was like, how am I gonna pay for this? What have I done? This was freaking ridiculous. I'm all way over regret, my skis. All the regrets, started yeah. focusing on the regret side. Well, well it was like, it, it, it was just like, it was like, what have I done here? I'm ahead of myself, I shouldn't have done this. And I got terrified, man. And it was actually, it was not a feeling of I had arrived at all that people think about. Like, oh, I'm somebody now. And uh, I think having that money made me want to work harder because I didn't want to go backwards. But what happened was I became like terrified I was going to lose the money. You going back home, son. Yeah. I was, ter I was so scared I was going to lose the money that I didn't actually enjoy it. You know what I mean? Do you, have you ever had that? I know exactly what you mean because it's exactly the same panic I had, but it was with 75 million cash in the bank. That's when I met you. I was scared to death. Wow. That I didn't want to be the guy that made it. That damn then, 75 million doesn't seem like I'd the be guy, worried about it. And then the guy that lost it. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Because I think people think, oh, when I have it, uh, I'll be in better shape. But, but this overwhelming fear that it's one thing to make money, but then do you really want to be known as the guy 
who that blew lost it. And, uh-huh. blew it. and that that overwhelmed me, uh, and it, you know, it, it shaped my thinking. So, so how'd you make that much money? Well, was that the company that that, that was the one, the last company I sold? Uh-huh. And uh, but you know, I I remember for me, I told my dad that at 26, 27 years old, that I was now the CEO of a public company up in Canada. And I told him that I just got my stock certificate when we listed, and I showed it to him, and it said I had $10.2 million worth of value. And the best advice I ever got from a mentor was don't count it until it converts to cash. Because some of the guys I worked with that saw those stock certificates and margined and borrowed against them, when the stock went down, they went broke. Uh huh. And I learned back then, don't spend money that you don't have. But uh, I thought, man, I finally arrived. A, excuse me, but so, it's my, no, no, you got another man oh, up here, pal. Sorry. Okay, I'm not paying attention. That's seventy-five million. I'm getting ready to get it. You're double, we're gonna double. Two thousand dollars. You want to take that? Uh, I'm all over the place. I'm open everywhere. I'm all over the place. But I'll take it. Take it. Put it over there in your little box. Okay. I don't want any misunderstandings. Yeah, so, yeah, that's cool, 5-1. Um, that's cool, man, what a story. But I, I you know, I never really, I, I, I went from not having, being a millionaire, to all of a sudden tricking myself to thinking I was a 10 millionaire. Yeah. Then busted my ass for seven years to end up with a couple hundred thousand dollars. Up and all the way down to zero. Wow. And that's where I, uh, I did lose it all. And you did, I, huh? Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. So when it's, when my investors wanted to sell the business, I, I, the stock was down. They, they sold it for the money. Th- this is what I learned about inv- private equity. They had this Dang. internal clock that was eating away at my value. Uh-huh. So when they sold it, I actually only got a few hundred grand. Even on paper, it said $4.2 million. When they actually sold, I got a couple hundred grand. Wow. And then that couple hundred grand is what I used to parlay into starting my last business. But I didn't want to use anybody else's money because I felt like the guys with the money took my business. So I used my own. And and that was one, And you know, who knows? I didn't know how it was going to go. Or You're in trouble. Right? I am in big trouble. Yeah. I'm so busy talking to you. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I didn't have anybody. I didn't have anybody explain the game to me. That was my problem. I had nobody around me, dude. It was so I was in constant terror because I had zero frame of reference. There was nobody that, um, there, you know, my dad was dead. My older brother was dead. My uncles were all busy. I didn't have. I didn't. I didn't even trust my accountant. I don't. I didn't never had a. I didn't have a lawyer until I was forty five years old. Wow. I didn't know what I was doing, dude. All I knew was I was working. You got. You got. You got everything where you want it now. Double twos. Got to watch this guy. His camera's on us. Uh. So. Yeah, man. I was just always scared. And I don't. I mean, I. I what, do you, what do you I think? Definitely so, wouldn't do it again the way I did it. What What do you think's worse, having that first million in the bank, and being so scared that you could lose it that you always fought to make more, or thinking you had ten million in the bank and waking up and realize you didn't have anything? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I I've never had that situation, so I don't know what that would feel like. I would hate to think that I had ten million and then one day it was all gone. Like that would be freaking. That would be terrible. Yeah. What would you guys do differently? I think I mean, what, you know, what, I mean, I, I can't even, I can't even imagine, like, um, thinking you had all this money and then all of a sudden, and I think that's the scary thing, dude. Everybody thinks about going backwards, you know? I know what I would have done different. I would I needed people around me. I needed, I didn't have anybody around me, bro. And then when I did get people around me, I got the wrong people around me. I tended to attract a bunch of guys that had given up on the game. Yeah. I remember a guy named Phil who busted out. There, there were a bunch of men in San Diego in my, in kind of my, they were guys that were willing to give me time, right? So the problem with that is, you don't always know if the time they're giving you is good. They're just, they're, all they're doing is giving you the experience. Yeah, how do people One guy know? was retired. Pete was retired. Phil was retired. Joe Crines was basically, he didn't want to work anymore. 
Um, and the, these guys are all trying to figure their life, lives out. And, and look, they were great guys, but I wanted to go someplace and they wanted to get off. They were ready to like, I want to chill. How do you know when people along the way that are giving you advice, if you should even be listening to them, even if you do respect them? Like, how do you know it's relevant to your I, cycle? I, I, you know, I, I know that I made a big mistake. That was one of the biggest mistakes I made. When I finally got people, I wanted somebody to help me so bad that I would take anybody's advice. And I did not look at where they were at in the cycle of their growth. They were trying to get off. And I, they were trying to get off the train and I'm trying to find a train to take me someplace. I'm asking them for directions how to get to freedom and they're like, dude, I, I'm getting off. I'm getting off that train. I'm happy where I'm at. They were going to, to, to satisfaction and I was trying to get to the place where I was like, I don't want to worry about money anymore. And so Pete told me, hey man, just you need to chill, bro. You need to enjoy life, man. Don't oh, work so hard. Money's not going to make you happy. I got more bad advice from more people, uh, you got two more, I think, yeah. than, than I got good advice because a lot of that shut me down and it, it really made, it introverted me so much. It, you, that's one more, one more. Go, I know you want to move no, I have there, two more. that's not the move. I have two more. Like, that's three, this is four. What are you talking about? You got two fours, okay? You keep wanting to put them right there, yeah. and that's not enough. Okay, you got to stack them all up and get weak. Well, I'm just thinking but where wait, I want but, but we got one other issue. Did you hit me? I did. Okay. Right here. So, so this is my first move. No, a four. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Two more. That's yeah. two. Yeah. That's so I got the first move one. Two. That's two. Two more. So the, I, you know, I know everybody wants a mentor. The mentors cost me a lot of money because I had the wrong guys. I had wrong the wrong guys. guys at the wrong place with the wrong intentions. It was not that they were bad people. They wanted to get off the train, and I didn't want to get off the train, dude. I wanted to blow up. Everybody was telling me, man, don't, man. Bigger's not better. You're not going to be happier. Uh, scaling, like th that word wasn't even around then. It was yeah. just bigger's not better, smaller's better. And how? And do you think all those people felt that way because of all their failures? Yes, so they just one hundred percent, one thousand percent, bro. With the one guy, the one guy was a super talented dude. That guy could have been as big as he wanted, as big as he wanted to be. And what happened with him is, he got cracked in a contraction. He was a builder. Oh, uh, so he was. He built, and he should have kept building. He should have kept pushing into it, and he and, and when he got slapped, he backed off. And I didn't know the whole story. So the thing the thing that I know today is, you should know somebody's entire story before you ever take one piece of advice from them. The whole because, story, because yeah. that is going to color their truth. He was telling me his truth, and my uncle was telling me his truth, and my dad would have told me that it, it, people are just telling you what their what, what their reality is. It's not like anybody was trying to hurt me. So when somebody's sitting there getting advice from all these people, what about when they're getting advice from people that actually hadn't even done anything they're trying to do? Because I, I I I listen to people, they're like. I can't, or no one, or it won't happen. And I'm like, where do you, why do you have this feeling? Well, because other people have tried, or people told me, or they didn't, they didn't even try it themselves. Like, what would you say to those people? Yeah, I mean, what would I say to people that say? That, that, that use excuses before they even take action or yeah, try. Yeah, I think you need to look at where, where you're getting that data from. Like, nobody, want, nobody naturally wants to quit. It is not like, even a child knows, okay, I gotta, I'm gotta. i gonna have to do this again to get it right. So, you know, it, it, you know, nobody, nobody thinks they're gonna get better because they stop. And, and, and so I think it's like where, what happened that we are doing this because it's not really normal. So when I want to quit on something, I'm like, okay, who, who got in your head, bro? Because it's not normal to quit. Like what got in your head? I don't want to go to the gym. I don't have time. I don't have the, I can't take the risk. I can't make it. Who told you that? Because I wasn't born with that idea. I, I go to that all the time. Like I don't want to work out in the morning. I'm like, okay, what, 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 what's saying that working out's bad for me? Because every time I've ever done a workout, I felt better afterwards. No matter how bad it hurt. I've always felt better. So why would I wake up the next day and say, I don't want to do this? Every time it made me feel better. 
you know, going on adventures, coming down here, doing this, saying yes. I had to carve out my calendar and do all this to be with you here at this, you know, this big thing you're doing for your, yep. your our, our partners. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm so happy I'm here. What, well, you should be. You, what, you, I'm making a fortune right you here. You paid your whole trip's table. been paid. For. <laughs> so, so you know what I'm saying? Like, so I have to just keep telling myself, Grant. You know, just keep showing up, bro. Just show up. That's never going to be a problem. If you show up, you're going to be better off. And I need people around me that can encourage. Oh, god, dang, man, that's brutal. you want to move those for me. <laughs> that Thank is you. brutal. So, you know, Grant, if, if in reflection, you know, as you're sitting here, if you could go back in time. <gasps> what are you making so much noise about? I don't know. I was excited about if that. You, Big. If you could go back in time, is there one very specific? I know for me, I know what the one thing. Is there one specific thing that you would do or redo? One thing I would do? Yeah, man. I would, I would, I would, I would go so much bigger. Son of a bitch. Okay. I would go so much bigger, bro. I would like. I I had no clue. I, I mean, I knew, but I'm not, I know it's not an actual thing that you can that, that I'm telling you right now. But he double fives, man. I would have gone so much bigger. Uh, yeah, okay. You know, I should have done. I should have done so much more than I did, or have done, and I should have done it sooner. Now I can't take it. Two grand. And, and I should have, oh, God damn, I got all these phones, but none of them are mine. <laughs> so I, I would have gone, I would have gone, I would have did, I would have gone into a different space. I mean, there's so many regrets that I have. First, I wouldn't have done drugs for 10 years. None of them, not even the weed, that there's going to be legal. I wouldn't have done anything. I would have, I would have, I would have not, you know, I'd go back and not waste one weekend ever on partying. A lot, a lot of what I did was right. So once I got my life together, I don't know, it's, was that your win or mine? Oh yeah, I'm black. Um, so I wouldn't have wasted any time on drugs and alcohol. God dang, look at this double sixes, man. What, what happens when a camera comes out? No, you just start freaking rolling. Fuck. Brandon, what's your moment? Oh. I had created a new program when I had my public company and my board of directors, those shareholders that forced the sale of my business. They told me they weren't interested in that business and I could keep it myself and, and gave me board authorization to set it up in a new company. And I knew it was going to be a home run. So I thought about the five or six guys that gave me the seed capital. I didn't want to screw them out of the benefits. So I went against what the board said and I started this company inside the business. Within 36 months, it was doing 1.4 million of profit per month. Wow. And, and when they sold the business, it was all the value of the business. Had I just gone to, I didn't go seek guidance from my five or six guys. If I would have said, hey guys, I'm gonna start this new company, the board authorized it, I'm just gonna give you 35% of the business. It's gonna be better than the original thing you invested in. They would all said, great. But because I didn't ask them, I just made the decision myself. They felt. I didn't get guidance and therefore I left it in the business and then we didn't get any of the benefit. Wow. I would I would have made that business, I would have made $100 million off of it in my first business. It said I got nothing. It Man. sold with the business. But you know, do you spend any time even doing the regret thing? No. I mean, I really spend zero time on it. I don't regret it. I try to learn from my past mistakes, like when I'm trying to make a good decision, like when I bring shit to you, I think, oh, I can make this decision. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go ask just because especially if you're partners or like, like these guys were partners, they gave me my seed capital. Like, I think it does give me an opportunity to pause and think about how I want to do things. Uh, but I don't think I live much in regret. I know I can. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, it took me a, it took me a second to get over, you know, 2008 sure. was really painful for me. And then once I've realized, hey, you know what? You just need to move on, bro, because you need to make the most of that learn from it and make sure the next time this happens, the next time this event happens, I'll take it. Make sure I, add, I take that two grand off that last, I don't, cause I don't have my phone out here. I don't know where it is, but yeah, I will. somewhere around here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Three, five, five, three. 
you know, the one thing I do is I, I convert, I convert like, okay, it didn't work last time. I got to figure out how next time I'm going to take advantage of the situation. But that's, all, that's, I think that's the view I have is that I missed it last time. I'm not going to miss it again. Yeah. And, and, uh, I try to take those losses and convert them to ooh, double sixes. 54. Mm. You try to take the losses and convert. And convert them to productivity. Yeah. Uh, what would be the best piece of advice you'd give to somebody that just hit their first million? I would say uh, you just hit a million bucks. Play some back gamble with me. <laughs> Second thing I would tell you is, um, you know, don't don't think that you've made it because you hadn't. Three, don't save any of that money. Reinvest every like leverage the million, leverage it. You, figure out how you invest more than a million, so that you can get that thing to ten million as fast as you can. Do not spend time on incremental growth. It's a waste of time. It is complete insanity. It does not work. It's almost impossible to maintain or sustain. And is that one, two? Didn't I hit you somewhere? No. I want to. You can't. I'm covered. Um, and um, so leverage it and, and, and drive it to do, 10. Do, 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 drive it to 10 as fast as you can. And then when you get to 10, get around. Get, you, you, you're going to probably end up with a whole new squad of people like an entire squad of new people. You're gonna go through people and hopefully you're gonna keep upgrading people. Because yeah, the because people, that's the, the investment, that, right? Like learning to hire people and get them to work with you. Well, the like, people that got you there are not gonna get you to, to yeah. they, they, they can get you to five, no, a million. They, they're not gonna, and that was probably all you anyway. They're not gonna get you to the next place. So I know there's this whole, I gotta be loyal to the people that got me there. A million dollars, you hadn't got anywhere. Yeah. Like you're at such risk. You're at more risk when you're at zero, uh, at a million than you were at zero. Yeah, because you have false sense of Yeah, because it, 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 it's zero, you know what you got to do. You just got to feed yourself. It's simple. It's like when I was doing that show, Undercover Billionaire. It was, yeah. it was so simple. People don't understand. I'm like, guys, it was so simple because all I need is food, water, and, 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 and uh, a place to sleep, and I need to meet somebody. Like, there was nothing complicated every day. I need to eat. I need to sleep someplace tonight. When you're hungry, like literally physically hungry, it's not complicated what you have to do. Yeah, you got it. You got it. There you go. That'll work. And that'll it. work. Yeah, <laughs> Spanky, it. just call me Five. Spanky Alicious. Yes, I just, uh, I cracked your ass. Here you go, big boy. How about some of that? $4,000. They call me Spanky because I get all up in your ass. Take it. Take it, take it, I know you want to. Yeah, man, it's, but you know, look, it's a cool game, man. The whole game's cool. The, 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 if people are committed to success, I mean, really committed to the whole game. Did I hit you right here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's what I find is I find that uh, people, they want the success. Don't get out, don't get out. Three, four, six, three, four, six. Oh. It's crooked. Three, four, six, three, four, six. Five and a four. And uh, can't hit you, can't. No hitty witty, baby. Oh, I just got to keep breaking And you got garbage. Up. You got garbage. You got a garbage roll over there. I'm going to crack him, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take him from 10 million to zero right here on the back game on board tonight in Cabo. So what are you doing down here? Like, 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 so what happens? All these people get here tonight, and then what happens? Well, so we've got a mastermind with, with many of our partners. I mean, and, I know, know you got a mastermind, all... but I don't even know what it means. Like, what does that even mean? Well, basically, this, what's cool that's going on down here is I have many of the mentors who help shape my thinking that have yeah. that been, been guiding and advising me for 20 years uh, in different areas of my life. They're, they're, they're my friends down here, and so a lot of them are down here, so I have them speaking to a group of business owners and partners that oh, we're working cool. with. So like like Hector Lamarck's coming, Hector right? Lamarck, Mark See, Still. I, I've known Hector, about it, Hector for I don't even know how long. One? No, that's a two. You need a two here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Hector, I mean, you know, it, it's... Oh. oh, my God, that's not good for me. Six, I'll do the one. Oh, so, or the six. 
see, I'm gonna do the six like. No, I'm gonna, no, no, it just looks relaxed here. I'm gonna do six like that. Okay. okay. That's it. That's all the moves I'm, you got. I got a one. So where's no. my one? I didn't do my one. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't because I, I was going to hit him, but I didn't. I used my six. Okay. So okay, I'm going to do that one. He is. He's cheap. So, you know, they're just going to, I'm going to have them share their wisdom and their thoughts. Um, so the people come in from all over the country. Yep. All and over the world. We have somebody from Dubai. We oh, have wow. somebody from Dubai, yeah. And, uh, uh, and then they pay money to come here. And then we, we have them bring with them the top three to five challenges they're having with their business uh -huh. so they can ask good questions. And they spend how long they're with you? Two couple days? A uh, couple days. And they uh, hang out in a big resort like this. Hang out in a big resort. Y'all do cool things. And we all you do. You can't do, oh, two. Sorry, okay, sorry, sorry, sir. Yeah. I'm excited. Seven, seven, seven. And so we basically help them break through. You know, you are like the people you spend your time around, right? So. Uh, given an opportunity to be around the people who have helped shape and, 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 and you're here. I mean, like, it's just amazing to have, it's amazing to have the people that know how to be successful. Like, were you ever given an opportunity to be around people that you know you could vet, that the mentors that you believe in would bring in people who mentored them? So you get the best of like, you get the beginning of the cycle and you get the end of the cycle yeah, and yeah, you get yeah. the middle of the cycle. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. That's the one thing I would have done different. I would have got around. I should have invested money early on in getting around people that had been there, people that had done it, and and uh, got around big boys, big boys and girls, people that were doing big stuff, taking big risks, taking on debt, not listening to people that are like, they, I, got, I got advice on money and debt from people that didn't have any money or any debt. <laughs> They thought car debt was business debt. So we should do this again sometime, but right now I gotta focus on this game because I'm gonna kick your ass. All right. You know what I'm saying? I do. That's what I'm about to do. Well, you know, G, I know one of the things you and I have spent a lot of time talking about, especially when we're playing backgammon, is creating billion dollar enterprises and doing it with people who, A, we can have fun with, B, who are serious and committed, and, uh, and for me, this is just the beginning of that cycle, and I'm really excited about it. Well, that's good you're excited about that, but I'm excited about kicking your ass I know, right now. I know you're. That's what I'm excited about. I'm about to bust you up.